I am the one who answers your prayers and cares for you. I am like a tree that is always green. All your fruit comes from me. Hosea 14:8. Yeah, we all are on a journey. It starts with our birth, it ends with our death. And along the way, there's many things that changes all the time. There's so many varieties in life. There's so many things happening. It's not just that we get older and see things differently. It's also that circumstances change. And in this very season that we're in, we all realize we are not in control of what's happening. We're on a journey and we're part of what's happening. The landscapes around us are changing and there's really big contrasts. One day can be this way and the other way, everything can be changed. I want to talk to you here, we as a team, what kind of contrasts do you find in your life that really change? Well, seven months ago, we received our daughter and she turned my life yeah. upside down. <laughs> That's what they do, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. There are some days they are amazing. Yeah. And I love the sun, the city. And there are some days they are really heavy and challenging because she don't want to go to bed. She's crying. And that's really tough. <laughs> that's why you look a bit exhausted on this picture here. <laughs> but still good. You still look good. <laughs> What about you, Timon? What is the contrast in your life? And um, when Jesus came into my life, I had to leave like all my friends behind because we didn't have any common interests anymore. And then I, it was like half year and I had no social surrounding. But then I came into church and I met a lot of new, so good friends. Yeah, great. People come and people go. Yeah, and there are also times to celebrate. I think of my marriage yeah. where we celebrate the love of us or you can celebrate birthday parties. But there are also times in life where um, we're heavier, maybe when someone you love passed away. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, or I'm a, a real team player. I love to work with my team and yeah, like get to new ideas together. And now it's completely different. It's home office, I'm all by myself. And that's a completely different feeling. <laughs> Yeah, things change so hardly in our lives. I mean, home office, I knew about the word. I also did home office once in a while, but now it's only home office. And I love it in a way, but I hate it also because I love people, I love to be around the people. And there, there are words that determine our everyday life now, like isolation, quarantine, distance, social distancing. Those words were really strange to us. And today they're familiar. Things really change and we have to get used to it along the path of our way. So, so many contrasts are happening. Many things go on and are different the next day. But there's one thing that's always the same way. One thing remains. We often sing that song. One thing remains. Your love never ends. Never, <laughs> never fails. It never runs out of me. So it's really God who never changes. He is the constant in our life. He was and is and is to come. And that's what we want to go dive in today in Hosea 14. There's a whole chapter about this awesome God that is the same God. And he is present always and everywhere. That's the title I set for this part. In Hosea 14 verse 8 it says, I am the one who answers your prayers and cares for you. I am like a tree that is always green. All your fruit comes from me. So whatever's going on in your life right now, situations changing, maybe you're desperate with what ha what's happening in the circumstances we're in. We have a God who is always there for us. He cares for you and he listens to you and he even answers when you pray. That is so awesome. 
So today when we talk about hearing God's voice, it's about being in a conversation. It's about trusting a God who is near and who is there all the time. He remains the same all the time. And this is what the verse is talking about, like a huge green tree, about the God who is answering the phone when we call him. So you can find a place with God where you can pour out your heart and even get the answers you need because he is so generous with us. He hears what is going on in our lives. And then what the verse also says, there is fruit for you, more than enough, because everything he need, you need, you will get it with God. So what, what, is, what is the real picture here? We have a God who answers. Maybe you're frustrated. Then find a place with God and talk to him and say, God, you know, there's Corona happening down here. Did you ever, have you ever heard about Corona? No? Okay. <laughs> You've never heard about it? Oh, yeah, it wasn't born in your house, right? Okay. <laughs> hey, God, I'm really frustrated about what's going on in my life because in my family we have more uh, troubles than ever before. What do you say about that? You're the peacemaker. All right. And you want to live in me? Okay. You want to make me a peacemaker? Wow. That's challenging. But thank you, God. God, you see my isolation. I don't like home office. What do you say about home office? Oh, it's your everyday life, okay. Oh, I thought you were down here as well. Oh, you're everywhere, okay. Yeah, so you want to give me community. You give me ideas how I connect with my friends. Thank you, God. And you realize whatever is happening in your life, there might be home office, but it might be much more serious stuff going on. You have a God, you can talk to him, and he will answer you. That is our awesome God. And you can sit in his shadow. He's like a huge green tree, and he gives you fruit. So every word coming out of God's mouth is like a refreshing fruit. Mm. And I can sit in his presence. His word is feeding me. Whatever truth comes in my life comes from the Lord, and I'm refreshed. There's everything I need. So what is the problem that we sometimes don't hear God's voice? Everything is installed, there's God, he's like a tree, there's fruit. The problem is sometimes even before we swallow the word of God, we start looking around and we see, oh wow, there's some other fruit hanging low there. Maybe that will help me more than God. I'm sometimes in a hurry because I think if I work more, then I will be more successful. So I lift up my ass from the presence of God. I walk to the fruit that is attracting me, which is actually just seducing me to leave the presence of God. Or maybe I think, wow, a little sip of wine would help me. Maybe also would help me, you know. Just a cup of wine, you know, everything is more easy in the evening, just an aperitif. And you think about it and you start to pick fruit that is not really going to help you. It is bringing you away from God's presence. Miri and Timon, what is your fruit that is drawing you away from God? Let's be honest. Let's be brutal <laughs> honest. Um, when I have like little breaks during my day, 5, 10 or 30 minutes, I often pick up my phone and God just yeah, showed me that I, I am looking for rest and peace in the completely wrong thing. And in the end, I, I just get no way. I have less energy than before. Yeah. And for me, sometimes I think I'm too busy to take time with God. And I yeah. put pro uh, wrong priorities. I think I have to first clean my apartment, mm -hmm. uh, make a text message or call a friend or read the news or go to the groceries. And after that, I take time with God. All right. I'm sure you know this fruit, that fruit that is drawing you away from God and what's happening. We start looking around for fruit and we start moving away from God and in one place we just get lost. And we remember a story where people were lost as well.
Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. You know, there's situations happening. Hello, I'm here. <laughs> Where we get lost through the fruit that is drawing us away from God and we still maybe hear him and one day we start that we don't even hear him anymore. And it's because we hide from God because we get attracted from fruit that is not really helping us. In Hosea, it says the following thing, the following thing come back to God. Take words with you and return to the Lord. Say to him, forgive all our sins and receive us graciously that we may offer the fruit of our lips. Assyria cannot save us. And I want to tell you more about Assyria later. We will not mount war horses. We will never again say our gods to what our own hands have made. For in you, the fatherless find compassion. The Hosea text here tells us to return to the Lord. I'm sure so many people got attracted from wrong fruit in the crisis we're in, the situations we're in, and it's the place where we go, have to go back, is the place with the Lord. Assyria in this text means, I don't rely on people's opinion in my life. That can be a bad fruit for you if you rely on people's opinion. God told the people of Israel, don't listen to what people say. The war horses can be the horsepower in your life. You think you can do it by yourself. And I tell God, I want to put it down. I don't rely anymore on my own strength. And the third one is that we, th we worship the work of our own hands instead of worshiping God's, our God. So today, we want to get practical. Everyone in here, we have bad fruit in our life. Miri and Timon, please join me. And we're going to do a prayer. Every single one of us, we're going to do it first so you know how to do it. We want to lay down the fruit in the presence of God. And I say, Father, I'm returning back to you. I'm coming back to you right now. And I lay down the bad fruit that I sometimes worship the work of my hands because I think I can do it by myself. Please forgive me, Lord. Yeah, Father, I'm so sorry that I was looking for peace and rest at the wrong places. Thank you for your forgiveness. Yeah. God, I come back to you, and I'm so sorry for being so busy and set wrong priorities. So it's your turn right now. Let's take a moment with God. Think about your life. What fruit is in your, hand, in your hand that doesn't belong there? And just lay it down. You can pray for yourself and I will finish with a small prayer because it's just a matter of heart, not of words. Thank you, Father, that we are still welcome in your presence. We lay down what draw, drew us away from you and we want to worship you. We come back to your heart because here is the place where we belong and where we are designed to be. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Come on, Timon. Hey, isn't that beautiful that we just can give away these bad fruits that wants to hinder us to go to this beautiful spot in the presence of our God? And the most beautiful thing about it is to know, it's not just like we want to do it. That's deep in God's heart. He wants the way free. He wants us to do that. And we read that also in Hosea 14, uh, in verse 4, there it says, The Lord says, Then I will heal you of your faithlessness. My love will know no bounds, for my anger will be gone forever. Hey, God doesn't want to be angry. He doesn't want to be he doesn't want anything to be in the way here. He wants to love us. He wants to forgive us. And he wants us to be in this spot where nothing is in the way, where we can enjoy his communion, where we can hear his voice loud and clear. And he showed that so impressive. Like 2,000 years ago when Jesus came, 
he died for all the bad fruit. He died that nothing will stand in the way. And the only human being ever who hadn't had any bad fruit, any sin in his life, took the cross for you and me and was punished instead of us so that we can live our life from this position. And the first time in history, God's voice wasn't only available for prophets and kings, but for everyone, for you and me. How awesome is that? And then maybe you ask yourself, yeah, but why am I not hearing God? Or why is it so hard sometimes? And I think one mistake we, we often make, and it's, it's, yeah, it's so fast that we are in this, is we are looking more for the voice of God than for God himself. And that's like when you come by this beautiful place, you invest a little time, 10, 15 minutes, and hey, God, please talk. And it would be best talk about the topic I asked, and then maybe we get a food, maybe we don't, and we go away. And then we make this like takeaway food, but God didn't want it, want it to be that way. God created us to live in this place, to never leave it again and to enjoy the fruit with him by his side. And in, he, he, he doesn't want to he doesn't want to give you a word or a miracle or something. He wants to give you his whole heart, his whole heart. He wants to give himself to you. And in Psalms 18, 25 to 26, it means, hey, to the loyal, you show yourself loyal. And you are pure with the one who is pure with you. And you could translate with completely or whole. Hey, he's whole with the one who is whole to him. And I mean, that's, that's absolutely fantastic. Think about that. And the only thing that, that you have to do is just to give the same thing back. Hey, be completely with God. And what does that mean? I think if you want to be whole with God, completely with God, he has to be the first priority in your whole life. And you don't, I mean, we, we often talk about this, but I think you have to show that with your life. You, you have to do action. Because, I mean, we, we talk about a lot, but what is your life saying about your priorities? And I think it says a lot. And I think there are two ways you can, you can put God first. You can put God in the first priority spot where he belongs and he wants to be. And the first thing is you can just make room for God. And I will tell you some examples of my life. I, I just knew, hey, God, I want to give you the... the biggest amount of my free time because I want to show you that you are the biggest priority. You are, you are the meaning of life to me. And for example, I start every day with God and I end every day with God and not just 10 minutes. I, I take my time and first I drink a cup of coffee. I thank him for, for all kinds of things. And then often I have communion and I tell him about the things that are not working right, I need help, or, or also the things that, that I've sinned and are between us, and I can give him these things like these fruit. And then I take like 20 minutes or something and be just quiet, and I listen what he wants to tell me. And most of the time, I don't have any questions, because what God wants you to say is oftentimes so much better than the thing we want and we expect, and he knows so much better what we really need than than we do. And the th second thing you can do is just like take away priority from other thing things that, that are too high or are ranked too high. And for example, God always challenged me a little bit. For example, the first thing was I deleted my social media accounts and I really like them actually. But I, I, I mean, it was a short of amount of time and I knew, hey, I don't get any reward from this and it, it takes so much of my time and now I can give the, the time to God or to other important things. Or another, another one was, I did a lot of sports and God told me, hey, Timon, it was, I mean, sports is a good thing, but don't you think it's a little bit unhealthy how much you're doing? And I was like, yeah, I mean, that's true. Sports is an amazing thing, but maybe it's just like a little bit too hard, a little bit too much. So I, I restarted and I, I, uh, God showed me a healthy way to do sports. And he doesn't want to, to take away things from you. He just wants you to be in this spot, to live in this spot. And he just wants to take away the things that could, could take away you from this spot. And I mean, 
maybe this sounds a little bit radical, but it's not like you have to turn your whole life around in, on one day. It starts with one decision. You say, hey, God, I want you to be the first priority in my life. And then he's not like, yeah, do this, 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 and this. Hey, he will show you one thing after another, one thing after another, and you will see how beautiful life is from this spot, how beautiful his voice is. And when God is the first priority in your life, you will soon find out that God absolutely loves to talk in every kind of ways. And how this can look in your life will tell us Miri. Thank you. Yes, I want to go back and jump again in Hosea 49 because I so much love this verse. We can read there in uh, 9, Hosea 49, that he will answer when you ask. Wow, he will answer when you ask. That's so crazy. The God of the universe who made you and I will answer when you're asking. And he don't say this just to the Israelites. He will say this to you and me tonight. But how about you? Can you hear the answer for God? Or is it difficult for you? I can remember when I was in Sunday school a long time ago. The Sunday teacher told me that the telephone number of God is 5015. Unfortunately, God never picked up the phone. As a child, you believe everything. But now I know she was thinking about Psalm 5015. And there it says, call on me in times of trouble, I will deliver you. We can call God in times of trouble and he will answer you. But how is it looks like? Can you hear the voice of God? I think the most people don't hear the voice of God loudly, but that's no problem. God can talk through the Holy Spirit in so many different ways to you. He can talk through the Bible to you. He can talk through family, friends, small group. He can talk to the church through you, worship through the pastor. So many ways he can use to talk to you. How about you, Michi and Timon? How can you hear the voice of God? Often it's um, not just happening like that because um, I would lo love to happen it like that, but um, sometimes it's just going through the day thinking about any subject and there's a thought coming from out of nothing. And I think, wow, that's a crazy thought. And oftentimes I learned that I have to write it down and test it, maybe talk to it with a friend, uh, think about it. And then I realize, wow, that was a thought given from God. And then when I start to believe it and walk in it, I realize, wow, it was really God. And I'm still training on that, but it's often a thought and it helps me to talk with friends. I, I often hear God with friends. So good, how about you? For me, it's like a, a, a whisper inside of me, but like not, not a loud one. It's like, it's, it's, it's yeah. And I, I just, when I invest more time to know God, to be with him, then I, I, it's easier for me to discern, hey, was that really God or what is he trying to say? For me, I hear God's voice most times when I read the Bible. I invite the Holy Spirit to read it with me and suddenly some verses or words jump into my heart and talk to my situations I'm in or answer the questions I have and I'm getting so encouraged. Or sometimes God is talking to me through feelings or uh, when I worship God, I can feel the most time his presence and that's also a way of talking for me. Yeah. But God can use so many different ways. He's such a creative God. Mm. And what I love about God is he knows you exactly and knows how he can reach you, how to get in contact with you. And he has so many different ways to talk to you. Yeah. As I told you already, in June last year, we received our daughter. 
Right after we, um, she came on to the earth, she has to go to the Neocholas team because she could not breathe good. She couldn't see my face, but she already knew my voice. And what I really was surprised, her health was getting better all the time when she was with me and when I was talking. And that's also a picture for you and me. We see God in heaven face to face, but here on earth, we can discover his voice already. And that's amazing. I don't know, maybe you are a little bit disappointed because you don't hear his voice. You oftentimes already took the phone and you couldn't hear him. I want to encourage you today, don't give up. Yeah. Don't give up. And I want to give you four points that help me to hear the, God of voice, the voice of God better. And it should be just... Uh, encourage you and um, the first thing is I'm getting silent and that's really hard for me because I love to talk <laughs> just be silent because I think God is sometimes whispering to us there are so many noises around us like Timon already told you just be quiet and listen sometimes I can hear something and that's for me like I become a fruit, and sometimes I cannot hear him, but that's okay too. The second thing I pray is that I'm getting sensitive about God's voice. A few years ago, I worked with a friend, and she was highly sensitive, and I was really surprised how more she can hear and see and get noticed from different things I never saw or hear. And since this time, I pray that I'm getting sensitive for the voice of God through my day, that I can hear him and can see what he wants that I can see. What's really helping me as well, as I told you, is reading the Bible because it's the written word of God. And don't be surprised if just if you read the word, some verses are answering the questions you have. And the last thing, I believe, as well as Michi told you, God can speak to friends to you. Friends that love you and believing in you. You can talk about the situations you're in, the questions you have, and they can pray for you and encourage you. We want to now go into a video from Alia. She's the daughter from Dave, and she will tell us how she heard God. Ja, genau an diesem Ort hier im Kinderzimmer und am Bett von Alia waren wir vor etwa vier Jahren und da haben wir zusammen gebetet, Alia. Und du hast gesagt, Jesus soll der Chef von deinem Leben sein und er soll in dein Leben kommen. Und dann haben wir zusammen auf Gott gehört und dann hast du etwas ganz Interessantes gesehen. Weißt du was noch? Ja. Was war das? Ich habe mich und meine Familie im Himmel mit Gott essen sehen. Wow. Und ich finde das mega spannend. Weißt du warum? Weil in der Bibel steht genau, dass wenn wir ähm, zu Jesus gehören, dass er ein Festmahl für uns bereithält und das mit uns feiern wird. Und du hast da einfach etwas, was auch in der Bibel steht, gesehen, ohne dass du davon wusstest und das Gott gehört. Finde ich mega cool. Wow, isn't that sweet? Yeah. I think that's the fruit God gave Alia. Yeah. The picture she became. She now knows it's Four years ago but she still remember and she still want to tell it and those fruits God want to give you to encourage you and you are a daughter and a, and a son of God and he want a relationship with you and he want to talk to you and now we want to make some time where God can talk to you and we want to be quiet maybe it helps you when you close your eyes and we just want to invite God that he talks now. And God, I invite you. We are sitting in this chair by the tree and we see these fruits and we have a desire to hearing your voice. Please talk to us.
Amen. Thank you, Miri. Wow, maybe it was just too short for you. The Sunday still has some hours and the week even more. So take time, take time in the presence of God. Be there, listen to his voice, start exercising it because it's really worth it. We wanna end up with another thought that is also in Hosea 14. And I really believe Hosea 14, this whole chapter is a word in season from God for us as a church, but also for the whole world. It calls us to repent, to come back in his presence, to hear his voice, to talk to him, to get the fruit that really makes us powerful, gives us the food we need. And then Hosea 14 also talks about the reality that when we are in the presence of God, we are gonna be as a whole people, like a huge olive tree. You read that in Hosea 7 and 8. He says, my people will be, will be like a huge olive tree and its arms, its branches will spread out really far. And the smell will be like the cedar of Lebanon. It will, it will spread a smell that everybody is gonna breathe in and they will smell it like, wow. Wow, how amazing. So when we spend time in the presence of God, he is like a huge tree. His fruit gives everything that we need for life. And when we are here eating the fruit, hearing his voice, hearing his word, we're gonna be just the same, like a huge olive tree, like the voice of God for the world. How amazing is that? That God is transforming us in, in his picture. And I love that so much because that's the way we are meant to be part of his family, to be his voice. A lady from our church, Lydia, she is living that out in a very simple way. And she will tell you in a short clip what she is doing. I love complimenting people. And over the time I noticed that this is not only a huge gift for others, but also for myself. I just started to tell the people when I liked something in particular, or I thought, wow, this looks amazing. And I just told it directly to them. And of course the reaction was not always the same. Some people were very surprised or amazed, but they could feel it because it was honestly meant and it came from my heart. For example, I was able to tell a retired person in our company what a huge gap she would leave with her nature. And this resulted in a beautiful relationship, which now I benefit myself from. And this is just an example for me that God blesses those who bless others and it's just so inspiring to carry on his love and it amazes me every time. It's just complimenting people. What about sitting in God's presence? Start to talk with him about your friends. You see the troubles people are in, in your family, at your workplace, and you say, God, please talk to me. You see the situation Give me a word, give me a fruit that I can pass on. And that's exactly what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna get practical as well. You will see a QR code up on the screen and if you go there by your smartphone, please pick it out. And, um, and you can download a picture and it's a picture of the tree that you see behind me. It's also the verse on there of Hosea 8, 9, and you can send it to a person right now. Maybe you know about someone who really needs a word of God, who need, really needs encouragement. Maybe people who don't even know Jesus. And we want to end this message by being the word of God, being his voice to some people around us. And I give you just a few seconds to download the picture and send it with a few encouraging words. Maybe you don't use the picture, just your own words, a compliment. Let's be his voice for our friends right now, for those who are in here in the other rooms and also listening online. 
just do it right now. Be his voice.